This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I'm stepping up to the challenge again. I received an email from a viewer who asked a very simple question. How can I go about creating a very realistic camera shake inside of Avid Media Composer? And that is what you have in front of you right now. Now for me a camera shake is something that is very subtle. It's not this big jerky thing almost just like the camera is sitting on the cameraman's shoulder just with that very sort of organic movement to it. And to be honest, I thought to myself, well, how would I go about doing this inside of Avid Media Composer? And then it occurred to me that this is an effect that's better created inside of After Effects. So then I got to thinking to myself, well, how would I bridge that gap between After Effects and Media Composer? And then it occurred to me, my favorite toolkit, Boris Continuum Complete. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how we're going to create one or potentially many different camera shake effects that we're going to be able to take from Adobe's After Effects and transfer it using Boris Continuum Complete into Avid Media Composer. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's command or alt and tab into Avid Media Composer. And this is the shot, again, much like you saw in the intro that we're going to be working with. Now to set up our camera shake, you can either work with the footage or without it. It doesn't really matter. But what I have done here, I'm just going to hide Media Composer, and let's head into Adobe's After Effects, is I've imported that shot for us to use as a visual reference. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clip and I'm going to drag it and drop it onto the Create New Composition button. Now once I have it here, we're actually going to be using a solid to do this camera shake effect with. So we're going to take our solid, I'm going to drag it and drop it into my composition. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it black for the purposes of what we are doing. Okay. And I'm going to turn off the background layer. Now the parameter that we're going to use to make this camera shake effect is called motion sketch. Now I already have motion sketch loaded up right down here in the lower right hand corner of the screen. And if you don't have motion sketch here or located in any of the tabs inside of After Effects, you can always find it right up here in the window drop down and there it is right there, motion sketch. Now I should point out, and I don't know if I mentioned this in the intro or not, that the great thing with motion sketch is you don't need to be working with, to be honest, you don't even need to be working with the most recent version of After Effects. You don't even need to be working with the creative cloud version of After Effects. You could be working with After Effects all the way pre version CS6 and the motion sketch parameter is in that version of After Effects as well. So what we're going to do is again create our own organic camera shake effect. So what I'm going to do is with motion sketch selected and our clip selected, I'm going to come over and I'm going to start capture. Now nothing is going to start actually capturing until I click on the screen and I start moving around. So let's do that. I'm just going to click and start moving and you can see now that my camera is just moving a little bit. And if you look very closely in the middle of the screen, you can actually see what's going on and where the starting point of my motion sketch is. So what I want to do is I sort of want to start and stop near the same center point right here. And once we get to the end, I'm just going to let go. Okay. Now I can zoom in and there is the motion sketch right there. And I can actually drag down and you can see exactly where everything is happening inside the motion sketch. And if you actually take a look very closely, you'll see that a lot of these keyframes are actually Bezier curves. Okay. So this is going to give our motion sketch a very organic look or our basically our camera shake. Okay. I'm just going to zoom back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the position keyframe parameters that have now been added to this 
parameter, this solid here, and I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them onto the shot that we're going to be using as a reference. Now what I'm also going to do is just scale in on this shot a little bit. Let's scale into about 106. Okay, now all I have to do is preview this and you'll see that we now have that little bit of a camera shake. Okay, now if I wanted to be really particular, what I could do is I could actually take the first keyframe and I could copy it. And since we pretty much tried to line everything up at the start and at the end, we could come right down to the end, select that last keyframe and paste in the first keyframe. And I'm just going to move it down one keyframe right there, or one frame. And we now have a loopable camera shake. Okay, and you can see that it's very, very subtle, which to be honest is what I'm going for. Now, of course, this does beg the question, well, what do I do now? I've created this, you know, camera shake inside of After Effects. How am I going to bridge this between After Effects and Media Composer using Boar's Continuum Complete? Well, this is one thing that I love about, well, one of the many things I love about Boar's Continuum Complete is how flexible it is across the different versions, After Effects, Media Composer, or AVX version. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to apply, I'm just actually going to create a new solid here, and let's give it a color, let's make it red, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the BCC DVE effect, okay? And there's DVE, I'm going to take DVE and we're going to drag it and drop it down onto our solid. Now, much like I copied and pasted the position parameters from one element to the other in After Effects, what we're going to do is we're going to add a keyframe for the XY position. So when I press U on the keyboard, it's going to show me that XY position. Well, I'm going to delete this keyframe now, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to select all of the XY position keyframes on this solid. I'm going to copy them, and I'm going to paste them onto the XY parameter for DVE. And as soon as I do that, guess what I've now done? I've now added that camera shake to the DVE BCC effect. Okay. Now again, what I could do if I wanted to right here from within the effect is add that 106 scale. And to be honest, it actually needs to be just slightly, slightly more than that. Let's make it 108. Okay. There we go. And we should be good to go now. And to be honest, I shouldn't see anything moving other than the little center point of the effect. Okay. Now what I can do is I can come to the effects parameter and I'm going to take the preset value and I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to be prompted by the BCC effect as to how I would like to save out this preset. Do I want to save it as a static or as an animated preset? Now in our case, because this is an animated element, I'm going to say animated. I'm now going to be asked where I want to save this preset to. Now, depending on where I want to use this, I could save this right into the BCC Presets 10, the DVE category, or I can come right back up to the Boris Effects subcategory, and you'll see in here, I can actually get right into my AVX keyframes or my AVX presets. I can come down, let's just sort by the name here. I can come down to the Perspective category into the DVE, and I'm gonna call this Kevin's Camera Shake, okay? I could call it Kevin's camera shake number one because maybe I'm going to create 10 different camera shakes for me to bring from After Effects to Media Composer. All I'm going to do now is save this preset. Let's hide After Effects. Let's come back into Media Composer. And now inside of Media Composer, let's take our clip. I'm going to take it. I'm going to drag it and drop it into a new timeline. I actually just hit B on the keyboard to drop that in. It created a new timeline for me. And what we're going to do now is we're going to come to the effects palette. That's command or control eight on your keyboard. I'm going to come to the BCC category of effects. I'm going to come right back to where we were before, which is perspective. And I'm going to take DVE and I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto our shot. Let's make sure we actually grab the effect here. There we go. Perfect. And once the effect appears on the shot, what we're going to do is step into effects mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. You can always find it here at the top of the timeline. What we're going to do is we're going to navigate up to our preset dropdown. And you'll notice that when I drop it down, I don't see the preset in the dropdown. Now that's because I already had Media Composer loaded when I created that preset. If I quit out of Media Composer and came back in, that preset would appear here in this dropdown. But don't worry. All I need to do is to simply come to the load parameter for the preset. And you'll see that inside of the BCC presets 10 for AVX, inside of perspective, inside of DVE, 
there is Kevin's camera shake. And what's going to happen is once I say open, I'm going to be asked by BCC what exactly I'd like to do with this parameter. Do I want to stretch it to fit the current shot or do I want to preserve its timing? In this case, I'm going to preserve the timing because it is 22 seconds long, which is exactly what I created instead of After Effects. And what I'd also like to do is to have the camera shake start from the first frame. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that if you're going to go in and create a bunch of camera shake presets, what I would suggest is making long presets. Make it like one minute, two minutes long. In most cases, you're not going to have your shots that length. But by just having them that length, you're just saving yourself from having to go back in and creating longer camera shakes if you realize that the shot you're applying it to is a little bit too long than the preset that you created. All I'm going to do now is simply say OK. You'll also see that right down here, we've now been populated with all those keyframes that we created inside of After Effects. You'll also see them right over here inside of the effect editor. And now all I have to do is step out of the effect come back to the beginning and hit play and guess what we now have? We now have that camera shake effect loaded up inside of Avid Media Composer from what we created inside of Adobe's After Effects. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.